Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob here. Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I don't know which one of you individually or maybe collectively was praying for my hand to get better, but boy, it's a lot better than it was. It was almost unusable the other day. But I can actually move it and eh, a little bit of pain, but you know, I can live with that. So, devil thought he was going to get rid of me for a while. I don't think so. This is going to be part seven of The Marks of Israel by Colonel Jack Moore. Um, he writes, As long as Israel obeyed their God, Israel was to possess the gate of their enemies. And that's in Genesis chapter 22. And why don't we just go ahead and read that? Um, yeah. All right. Revel uh, Genesis 22, verse 16. And said, By myself have I sworn. So here it is. You got God swearing by himself. I swear to God. I swear by myself. I always like that. So. By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, um, God commanded Abraham to sacrifice Isaac, but he was willing to do it. He put the knife out and then said, okay, okay, I, you know, don't do it. Uh, of course, uh, the Muslims will tell you, oh, no, 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 it wasn't Isaac, it was Ishmael. Well, I don't believe anything they tell me, but... All right, so, the Lord says in verse 17, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed, or children, you know. We're not apple trees, so we don't have seed like an apple tree, but men do have seed. Matter of fact, if you look up in the Greek uh, what the New Testament was written in, you know what the word for seed is? Sperma. S-P-E-R-M with an A on the end. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what it means, seed. And... Um, if you got children, uh, well, you could explain that to them later, but yeah. So God said, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven. Now, I don't know how many of you have ever been out in the middle of the desert where there's no towns for 20, 30 miles, you know, out in the middle of the desert at night, but there are basically millions of stars. You can't count them. And God promised Abraham he would multiply his seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. Well, guess what, people? I lived in Florida for the majority of my life. Still do. And when I go to the ocean, to the beach, which isn't very often anymore. Of course, when I was a teen, I lived there. But uh, there's a lot of sand. Yeah. Uh, billions, I guess. You know, so you're talking down all through the uh, thousands of years of history. God would multiply him like the sand which is upon the seashore. Now here's the punchline. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Did you know that Abraham and his seed has enemies? You would never know that listening to the demon nominational preachers. Oh, God loves everybody. God wants everybody to be saved. Uh, praise a Jesus. Uh, please put some money in the collection plate. Uh, well, sorry, I don't have a collection plate, so I can't pass it around. And, uh, yeah. And when I do make my book, if I ever do... Lord willing, uh, I couldn't work on the book because my hands were hurting. Well, my hand was hurting so bad. 
but uh, maybe I'll I'll get a voice to text uh, program and I don't know do it that way. But um, God said that Abraham's seed, who was the grand uh, grandfather of Israel, Jacob Israel, um, he would possess, they would possess the gate of his enemies. Verse 18, and in thy seed, children, shall all the nations, you know that word nations, it's Gentiles, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. So, Colonel Moore writes, until the last few years, as the Israelite nations have become mired in what he calls uh J-U, and then add a D-E-O to the end, Christianity, uh, U-day-old Christianity. Uh, the white Western Christian nations held all these important gates. The Suez Canal, which is now controlled by Egypt. Uh, it was controlled by England until the 50s. Gibraltar, I'm not sure who controls Gibraltar now. The Panama Canal. Well, you know, the United States finished the Panama Canal. And um, Colonel, no, I'm sorry. Uh, captain Carter, Carter was a nuclear sub uh, captain, who became president in the late 70s. And he gave the Panama Canal to Panama. And guess who Panama gave it to? China. We no longer control the gates of our enemies. Uh, he says the, the gate, the Strait of Magellan. If you don't know where Magellan is, it is the southernmost part of South America between the, uh, I think it's the Antarctic and Peru. And then the Cape of Good Hope. And if you don't know where the Cape of Good Hope is, that is South Africa, uh, the very bottom tip of Africa, where you would go from the Atlantic into the Indian Ocean. And he writes that the J, you know who's, have never controlled any of these. Never, 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 never. Number 27. Israel was to observe the Sabbath nationally. This does not necessarily refer to the you know who Sabbath, which is observed on uh, Friday night to Saturday night or sundown, sundown to sundown. Um, I mean, think about it. Do you know that all the days of the week and our months are named after Greco-Roman gods? Yeah, they are. Uh, who named them? Not Christians. No. Saturday's named after Saturn. Um, and, well, you know, just look up the days of the month. March is named after Mars. Um, you know, the planet Pluto, Jupiter, Saturn. Who, who named the planets? Who named the months? Who named the days of the week? Not Christians. New, no, uh-uh. So, I don't know. But uh, Christians have set aside a day, one day in seven, to be set aside for worship and rest. And uh, from what I understand, people, they picked Sunday, which I would have named it S-O-N day, day, Sunday, day of the sun, not the sun in the sky, the son of God, um, because of the resurrection. That's what I've read. I don't know. That's what I've heard from people in the Greek Orthodox Church, and I tend to lean towards that way too. 
we are supposed to be a new creature in Christ and boom there there it is all right number 28 and I'm skipping some of his points here because uh, I don't think they're too uh, uh, that useful uh, Israel was to become a mighty sea power at one time Britain ruled the sea and the sun never set on her mighty empire. Uh, let me tell you something. Spain was probably Israel too. I'm sure they were. Spain uh, ruled the waves for a long time until the uh, Battle of Trafalgar. And then England rose and became the most powerful navy in the world for probably over 200 years. I don't know the exact dates, but... Uh, England, up until the World War II, had, well, at the beginning of World War II, England had the largest navy in the world. United States was second. Guess who was third? Japan. After Pearl Harbor, England had the largest navy in the world. Japan was number two. And then the United States was third because our Pacific fleet was laying on the bottom of the harbor at Pearl. However, at the end of World War II, the United States was by far and away the most powerful naval power in the world. We had, at the end of World War II, we had over 100 aircraft carriers. 100 aircraft carriers, not submarines, not destroyers, not cruisers, not battleships, just aircraft carriers. Yeah. Today, guess who's got the largest submarine fleet in the world? China. Our uh, ally over in the Middle East supposedly gave them a German Dolphin class diesel electric submarine to our Chinese trading partners. Uh, I use that word loosely. So that they could copy it and uh, threaten us with it. So now Japan, uh, China has the largest submarine fleet in the world. Yeah, pretty sad, huh? You know, England, like I say, prior to World War II, had the largest navy in the world. But then she, just like the United States, forgot her God, now remember, England gave us the King James Bible. And when they built churches and had the, built, uh, did the King James Bible, they were undisputed the most powerful nation in the world. Look at her now. She's basically a third-rate nation. But now, America has basically done the same. And we're becoming a third-rate nation of debt. Why? Because of our evil and wickedness. And we are losing out to the Antichrist communists. So, you know, if Russia, you know, I know people say, oh, Russia's getting their butts kicked in Ukraine. Bull. The you-know-whos are sending the whites from Ukraine to kill off the whites in the Russian Ukrainian army is killing the whites in the Russian army. Yeah, that's what's going on. That's exactly what's going on. But if Russia, now Russia had huge, huge army. You know, they do. But if Russia and China ever got together and said, we're going to get rid of the United States. Uh, I'd hate to think about, yeah. Um, all right, let's go read the Bible verses for this. All right, Psalms 89, verse 20. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. Holy oil. Um, oil in the Old Testament was indicative of the Holy Spirit. Uh, oil, 
well, you know, you, you can consume it. Also, you could light a lamp with it. Yeah. Isn't uh, the Holy Ghost the one that lead us into light? Absolutely. So, boy, that'll preach, huh? So they would anoint the head. So oil was good for the skin, good for the belly, and good for um, light. An oil lamp, yeah. And believe me, olive oil will burn. I've I tried it a long time ago. Somebody pointed it out to me, or I read it in scripture or something, and yeah, it's expensive that way, but it'll work. All right, so. I have found David my servant, with my holy oil have I anointed him. Now this is the Lord speaking. With whom my hand shall be established, mine arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. And I, and I will beat down his foes before his face, and plague them that hate him. See, people. there were people that hated King David. Verse 24, but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and in my name shall his horn be exalted. I did a whole Bible study on horn. A horn was indicative of power and rulership, and um, there's even a feast of trumpets, and God blows the trumpets in Revelation. So, you know, the Bible is, you just got to, the King James, get the King James and read it. And it's, uh, it's like a fabric. All the, the fibers touch each other. Uh, let's see. And in my name shall his horn be exalted. Verse 25. I will set his hand also in the sea and his right hand in the rivers uh king david and israel was to be in the sea and in the rivers you know look at the uh the danes or danish the vikings the vikings were norway sweden and denmark and they actually, the Danes actually uh, spell their country name D-A-N-M-A-R-K, the Mark of Dan, the Tribe of Dan. Danish actually means Man of Dan. Dan-ish, ish means man. Dan-man, or the Man of Dan, the Men of Dan. And the Vikings were, you know, they crossed... They, they did Greenland. They did Iceland. Greenland's only a hop, skip, and a jump away from Canada. I mean, they, 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 Viking longships. They used to go up the rivers. And yeah. All right. So let's take a look. All right. Let's go to Numbers chapter 24. Uh, Balaam was a prophet of the Lord that decided he wanted to be like Judas. Uh, he wanted his 20 pieces or 30 pieces of silver. Well, he got a lot more than that. Um, all right, so verse 1. And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he went not as at other times to seek for enchantments, but he set his face toward the wilderness. As Balaam lifted up his eyes, he saw Israel abiding in his tents according to their tribes, and the Spirit of God came upon him. You know, people, let me tell you something. Do you know that when Israel set up their camp, the tabernacle of the Lord was in the center, <laughs> and basically the tribes are set up in a uh, kind of in a cross. Yeah. <laughs> like a plus sign, a cross. Yeah. Yeah. 
Do you know that Joseph, when he blessed uh, Ephraim and Manasseh, uh, his father, well, uh, I'm sorry. Jacob Israel blessed Ephraim and Manasseh, Joseph's children. He crossed his arms. He made a cross. Yeah. You know, there's groups of people that hate the cross. But you know who's in the Middle East and the Jehovah's Witnesses. They hate the cross because they're enemies of the cross of Christ. Yeah. So, and oh, by the way, the furniture in the tabernacle. Did you know that's in the shape of a cross too? Somebody pointed that out to me in one of their books. I looked at it and I was like, whoa, that's heavy. Can you imagine that? The cross in the Old Testament. And then the Jehovah's Witnesses will say, oh, it was a torture stick. Well, it was torture and it was wood. But uh, they'll tell you, no, it wasn't a cross. No, uh-uh. It was just a straight pole. And his, his arms were kneeled upward and his legs downward. No, it was a cross, people. Yeah, the Jehovah's Witnesses, the, the false prophets that have predicted uh, the end of the world like half a dozen times wrong. The last time they said 76, 75, 76. 1975, 76, I should say. Yeah. Now, now they say, oh, we didn't really do that. Yeah, you did, you bunch of lying false prophets. All right, so. And Balaam lifted up his eyes, and he saw Israel biting his tents according to their tribes, and, he, and the Spirit of God came upon him. Numbers 24 and verse 3. And he took up his parable and said, Balaam, the son of Beor, hath said, and the man whose eyes are open hath said, he hath said, which heard the words of God, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. Verse 5. How godly are thy tents, O Jacob, and thy tabernacles, O Israel. As the valleys are they spread forth, as gardens by the river's side, as the trees of L-I-G-N, line aloes which the lord hath planted and as cedar trees beside the waters l-i-g-n i don't remember seeing that word before okay line l-i-g-n like in a line like you're getting your car's tires alignment or aligning uh straight um like line l-i-n-e okay so it's just, I guess it's an old English spelling of, yeah. Um, as the trees of line aloes, which the Lord hath planted, and as cedar trees beside the waters. Listen to this, verse 7. Here's the punchline. He shall pour the water out of his buckets, and his seed, the children of Israel, and his seed shall be in many waters. And his king shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. God's children were to be in many waters. All right, let's go to the next one. This would be number 29. Israel was commanded to be tolerant of strangers. And that's in Leviticus chapter 19. Uh, let's see now, raise up. Verse 33, Leviticus 19.33 And if a stranger sojourn with thee in your land, ye shall not vex him. But the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as one born among you, and thou shalt love him as thyself. For ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Now, when you think about it, who's been the most tolerant people in the world towards strangers well our flooding of the land with heathen aliens today should give you an idea um over in the middle east there's a country that if you're not one of them you are rated as nothing and have very very few privileges privileges not even rights right yeah 
Um, number 30. Israel was never to become subject of a foreign power. Now that's in Deuteronomy 15 and 16. We're going to read that in a minute. Neither England, the United States, or Canada has ever been ruled by foreigners. So let's look at Deuteronomy 15 and 16. I hope this pans out. I should have looked at that first. It doesn't make any sense. You know, I wonder if somebody uh, intentionally changed some of this information that Colonel Moore said and planted it so that it would it would not look good, like it was just pulled out of thin air. Because this is not what I remember from 30 some odd years ago when I was reading all this stuff for the first time. Um, I don't know. All I know is it was supposed to be Deuteronomy 15, 16, but it, it doesn't look. Um, all right, before I read the next one, let me look up the thing. We're going to go to 2 Samuel chapter 7. All right, this pans out. Deuteron uh, I'm sorry, 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 10. Um, the Lord says, Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. Where did the Lord plant us? Uh, I think North America and Europe. But, uh, I don't know. All right, let's see. Verse number... All right, in part 30, in uh, 32, he says, Israel's preservation will be due not to her vast military power, but through the divine protection and intervention of her God. The Zionists have their protection from the support of America. I firmly believe that when this mess is over and our God has balanced his scales, we will know of a surety, both Israel and her enemies, that the victory was not won through our might or intelligence, but because of the intervention and will of of our God. Um, he doesn't give any Bible reference to this. Uh, I, you should, uh, I, I did a video and other people have too. George Washington, our first president in the United States, General George Washington's vision for America. A lot of people say it's fake, but you know what? It looks like it's coming to pass. It really does. Um, and uh, all these, all this evil is coming upon us because we have turned our back on the Lord and the Lord has turned his back on us. I mean, let's face it. In 1964, a bunch of men in black skirts, well, they call them robes, uh, they call, they dare claim to be the Supreme Court. No, you're not the Supreme Court with uh, Darth Vader Ginsburg and, yeah. But uh, they, they uh, well, it wasn't that thing, but in 64, they took prayer and Bible reading out of the public school where it had been for, I don't know, over 200 years. I was the last generation to have Bible reading and prayer in Jesus' name in public school. I think it was 64. Uh, I think I was in first or second grade when this happened. Maybe third. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. Can you imagine... You know, the uh, we kicked God out of school. In 
in verse 33, I mean, I'm sorry, point 33, uh, Colonel Moore says, in the end, Israel will be joined to Judah and at least some of the people will return to the original land. Uh, he quotes Jeremiah 3 and verse 14 and through 18 and Ezekiel 37. And I believe, he says, I believe this will take place after our Lord returns. Well, yeah, the Lord himself will bring his people to the land, not the United Nations in 1948. You know, when people say that the um, Jews are fulfilling prophecy in the Bible by returning to the land, uh, yeah, they are actually, but not the way that they want you to believe. Uh, who was in the land before Israel went over there? Uh, the Canaanites. I believe that they have returned to the land. And if you read... The parable of the wheat and the tares, the tares being weeds, the wheat being God's people, you know, the bread of life, which is Christ. The tares, the weeds, are being gathered to be bundled and burned in the fire. Yeah, that is the fulfillment of Bible prophecy that is being done from... The United Nations creation of the state over there in 48. Yeah. Israelites. And oh, by the way, I have an entire playlist on uh, the wheat and the tares. Uh, on my channel, you just go to where it says, you know, videos, community, It'll say playlists and just go down until you find it. Wheat and the Tares. I think it's a four-part series. I don't remember. You know, 1,500 videos later, it's, yeah. All right, uh, point number 34. Israel was to be used as an instrument in the hands of God to destroy the heathen who would not bow the knee to his rule. Uh, wow, yeah. So, let's take a look. All right, in Jeremiah 51, verse 20. The portion of Jacob, now remember Jacob, his name was changed to Israel. It's, it's synonymous. The portion of Jacob is not like him, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Thou art my battle axe. My battle axe. Who used battle axes? You know who uh, was known famously for their, their the battle axe? The Vikings. Oh, yeah. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations. And with thee will I destroy kingdoms. Do you know the Spanish destroyed the Aztec Empire? Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the, the modern day Mexico City is the former capital of the Aztec Empire, where they used to do human sacrifice and cannibalism. Uh, yeah, think about it. All the nations of the Indians and what have you, they were crushed. They were the heathens. So, all right, let's see what else. Uh, da -da -da. Daniel 2.44. Let's take a look at that real quick. Uh, supposedly, this will be sometime in the future. Daniel 2 and verse 44. All right, Daniel 2.44. And in these days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Uh, when God comes back in glory, uh, Mystery Babylon is going to be wiped out. Period. Alright, on the next point, uh, he fails to mention 
but it's uh, Genesis 28, 14. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, and in thee, and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Uh, and he's in point 35, he says, Israel was to spread abroad to the east and the west, north and south. This is where the Israel people went in their treks to the New World, South Africa, New Zealand, and Australia. Um, and he writes, Israel has always been represented as being sheep. In the end times, they will be separated from the goat nations, those who who refuse the kingship, uh, refuse the lordship of King Jesus. And that is in Matthew 25, 31. Well, let's read that real quick. All right, yeah, this looks like a good reference. Matthew 25, uh, 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, Christ, and all the holy angels with him, you know, if there's holy angels, you know there are unholy angels. They're not going to be coming with Christ. They're already here on the earth. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, Christ. And before him shall be gathered all nations. And he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Um, for I was unhungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked and ye clothed me, I was sick and ye visited me, I was in prison and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king, Christ, shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, the goats. These are the scariest words you could ever hear in your life. Depart from me, ye cursed, cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. You don't ever want to hear those words from the mouth of Christ. Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me, and these shall go away and do everlasting punishment. Everlasting punishment. Does that mean eternal flames of fire? Eh, it seems to indicate that. But the righteous into life eternal. Wow. So, that is, woo, that's something, huh? Uh, 36. The Israel sheep nations would feed the hungry, clothe the naked, liberate the captives. Matthew 25, 31 through 46. Only the nations of Christendom have done this. Israel was to become circumcised in their heart, not just in the flesh. And that could be referenced to Deuteronomy 
Deuteronomy 30, verse 6, Romans 2, 28 through 29, Philippians 3, 3, and Colossians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. Yeah, and I'm not going to read those, but... You know, when there's a natural disaster in the world, who's flying aid and food and clothing and blankets all over the world to, you know, think about it. It's not the you-know-whos. Well, they're probably sending stuff, but we're paying for it. So, uh, let's see. Point 38. The Israel nations were to glorify the Holy One of Israel. Only the nations of Christendom have openly accepted him and based their governments on his law. Well, guess what, people? Our common law that came from England originally came from the Bible. Do you know that Harvard Law School was a Bible college? Harvard Law Harvard's Harvard was a Bible college. Well, so was Oxford and Cambridge at one time. And our laws were based on the Bible. You know, the idea that if you get in an auto accident that somebody else causes and you can't work or you become disabled, that you were to be compensated by the person that hit you, that whole idea comes from the Bible. Yeah. Uh, you don't get that in India. You know, no way. Uh, let's see. Let's see if this helps. Isaiah 41, 16. We're going to take a look at that real quick. Isaiah 41. Um, Isaiah and 41. We're going to take a look at that. And verse... 16, yeah. Eh, I don't see it. Thou shalt fan them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them, and thou shalt rejoice in the Lord, and shalt glory, and shalt glory in the Holy One of Israel. Now remember, when the Jesus was casting out devils, they said, to Jesus, the devil said to Jesus, I know who thou art. Thou art the Holy One of God. Even the devils knew who Jesus was. The you know who's over in the Middle East, they don't know who he is. But I do, and I hope those of you that listen to me do. Let's go to Luke chapter 1, verse 30. And the angel said unto her, Mary, fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Yeshua HaMashiach. No. And shalt call his name Jesus. You know, I believe my King James Bible translated from the Greek into Hebrew or uh, English, not Hebrew. The New Testament was written in Greek, not Hebrew, and not Aramaic, which is kind of a derivative of Hebrew and shall call his name Jesus and he shall be great and be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end praise the Lord for that and in Mark 1 verse 24 the devils saying let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee whom thou art, the Holy One of God. And second witness is Luke 4.34. Oh, yeah. Well, people, I think this is uh, going to conclude uh, this part. I'm almost done with the study, but uh, I got some things to do. Uh, I'm glad my, uh, hands better. I, I, it was, it hurt just to write my name, you know, signing a 
check or something you know I was like wow so I'm hoping um, that you will take a Bible and when you find an interesting verse mark it or in the front of the of the cover you know you write Israel and put Galatians 3.29. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs to the promise. Uh, I think I'm, I'm not sure if I'm paraphrasing or not. But um, one day, some of you, I'm hoping, will be in the wilderness. And our people are going to be wondering, why is all this evil falling upon us? And you're going to have to tell them, it is because we have forsaken the Lord our God. We took prayer out of the school. We tolerated filth and evil. We tolerated abortion. We tolerated the church of Satan. We tolerated the sin of Gog, plural, uh, where they openly mocked and cursed Christ. We didn't do that back in the day. So the Lord is just, you know, if you're going to tolerate evil, God will let the evil spread until it won't tolerate you. And when the mark of the beast comes and the man of sin, the son of perdition, the antichrist, the beast, whatever name you want to give him, well, those four names are his, the antichrist, son of perdition, the beast, the man of sin, the son of perdition, yeah. Uh, it'll be time to flee into the wilderness. When, the, when they build a temple... And the man of sin appears, it's time to flee into the wilderness. Go. Don't go back home and say, man, winter's coming. I better grab my coat. Uh-uh. Read Matthew 24. I did a Bible study on that too. You know, some of you, you won't be able to live in the cities. The heathen aliens hate us. They will. They will uh, do what they can to... Um, be rid of us. How many of those monsters are possessed of a devil? I mean, the cities are becoming dangerous to live in. Really. I don't know. But some of you are going to probably meet other people in the wilderness. And they're going to be wondering, why is all this going? Why is all this happening? God said he would preach rib rapture us out of here and we're still here. What's going on? And hopefully you had a Bible with you that it's marked with all the information that I've been sharing for, oh, I don't know, the last 10 years or longer. I've been on tube for 10 years. I've been on the internet longer, but uh, almost 20 Believe it or not, I've been teaching almost 20 years on the inter uh, internet. I've had radio shows uh, in Kentucky and down here in South Florida. Didn't do anything, but, you know, I don't work for the enemy, so I'll never be popular. But, uh, you know, it's going to be up to you to tell everybody, why is all this happening to us? Well, people that's why because we have forsaken the lord our god and we have we have badly forsaken the lord we've tolerated evil god said to put away evil i've had people argue with me they argue with me oh we gotta let them live because you know jesus might want to save them one day you know, if somebody's sacrificing a kidnapping and sacrificing a baby on an altar to Satan, I don't think the Lord wants us to save them so that they can go do it again and again and again and rape and murder. I think the Old Testament wants us to uh, get rid of evil just like King Josiah did. Do you know the Lord blessed King Josiah because he got rid of the Satanists? He got rid of them. All of them. He got rid of as many as he could. He cleaned house. Yeah. And people that live in like San Francisco, he got rid of them too. Yeah. People 
the evil ones are going to drive Christians out of the city. It's going to happen. That's why you need to re listen to the wheat and the tares. I think it's a four-part study. I go into detail. And it'll make sense. So, yeah. And people need to know who the children of Israel are. And people need to know in Ezra 9, there's a holy seed, which means that there has to be an unholy seed. But people don't want to believe that. They'd rather listen to fairy tales. And none of the stuff that I teach was is new. People knew this from hundreds of years ago. This was common, commonly taught 200 years ago. Not anymore, because we've fallen away so far. But what can I tell you? <sighs> I've done what I can. And I guess I'll try to keep doing it until the Lord calls me home. Now, I'll be honest with you, I'm more afraid to live than I am to uh, live through this garbage, what's coming up, than to be gone, if you know what I mean. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.